More on the coronavirus emergency. This morning, cases here in the U.S. surpassing 7.8 million. At least 34 states, plus the District of Columbia, reporting an increase in cases, while hospitalizations are up in 35 states. Stephanie Ramos has the latest on that vaccine setback and more. New this morning, a setback in the race for a coronavirus vaccine. Johnson & Johnson pausing a stage three trial after one of the participants developed an unexplained illness. Johnson & Johnson, not the first late stage vaccine trial to be put on hold. Last month, AstraZeneca's vaccine trials were paused in the U.S. after a volunteer became ill. According to the World Health Organization, there are 42 vaccines in human trials and 151 in development. Four of those are currently in stage three trials for use in the U.S. This, as The Lancet confirms the first case of reinfection, a 25-year-old Nevada man with no underlying conditions. It's quite possible that you could get it again and that that infection could be as serious or more serious than the first infection. As several states set records for their highest daily coronavirus cases, Dr. Anthony Fauci delivering a dire warning. We're in a bad place now. We've got to turn this around. Here in Wisconsin, the number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients nearly tripled in a month. We obviously hoped this day wouldn't come, but unfortunately, Wisconsin is in a much different a more dire place today, and our healthcare systems are being overwhelmed. Governor Tony Evers activating a field hospital at the state fairgrounds near Milwaukee. This 350 bed facility built in April has not been needed until now. Researchers finding there may be nearly 75,000 more deaths related to the pandemic than initially thought. And when compared to 18 similar countries, a new study finding more than up to half of COVID-19 deaths could have been prevented if more action were taken. Cassie Martinez and her mother were both hospitalized for COVID-19 in San Diego. Cassie died two weeks later. Her mother remains in the ICU and has yet to be told about her daughter's death. I know it's going to be a great, you know, a great deal of pain for her and we don't know how she's going to react. As for a COVID vaccine, it's unclear when Johnson & Johnson will resume trials, but one researcher says the pause is a good thing. It gives the vaccine maker and a safety board time to review those findings. George. Okay, Stephanie, thanks very much. Welcome back, Dr. Ashish Jha, the Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health. And, and Dr. Jha, let's begin with that vaccine setback. Put it in context for us and try to describe where we are now in the search for a vaccine, what our viewers can expect for wide distribution. Yeah, good morning, George. Thanks for having me on. You know, <clears throat> this is completely uh, normal, par for the course. This kind of stuff happens in clinical trials. Part of the reason why many of us have been saying, you know, we shouldn't set a timetable for when a vaccine is going to be ready. Um, my expectation is that they're going to sort this out. And whether it's this vaccine or a different one, that uh, we will have something approved uh, for emergency use probably in November, maybe December. And I think I'm still kind of believing that uh, we're on track to have widespread uh, availability of vaccines for the American people, probably in March, April, uh, or maybe May at, at the latest. How about this question of immunity? You've got the president declaring himself immune. As we learn of this case out of Nevada, 25-year-old man gets a second infection, turns out to be more serious than the first. What's your takeaway from that case? Yeah, so I do think majority of people, most people probably, who get infected and recover have some level of protection for some period of time. But it's just a reminder that we shouldn't be cavalier. There are people who are going to get reinfected, and some people will get reinfected and be sicker the second time around. So we're still learning a lot about the virus, and sort of uh, assuming that you're, assume, uh, that you're immune is not a good idea. So we have to be vigilant, especially as we see new cases cropping up all around the country uh, right now. What more should we be doing right now, and how do you squ Square that with your call to be opening more schools. Yeah, so there are two sets of issues here. I mean, I think right now I'm seeing a lot of governors uh, opening up bars and indoor dining. I'm seeing a lot of people uh, hosting house parties and gatherings, uh, sort of acting like the pandemic is over. Uh, that's where much of the spread is happening right now in those indoor gatherings. We're not seeing a lot of spread in schools. And so my take is I'd rather have bars closed and schools open than the other way around. Uh, and that's basically why I'm calling for uh, those set of actions. It's a pretty good mantra right there. Bar closed, schools open. Dr. Jha, thanks very much.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.